Welcome back to Project Castaway, everybody. This is episode five, and today we're going to go explore some of these smaller islands, as well as I need to head back over to that island at some point because I did some farming. I know you can't really see much. I did some farming off camera, and on that island over there, there was a couple spots where we saw sticky notes, so we're going to go get those eventually. Um, but I did move all of the log holders over here. Like I said, it's super hard to see. It's so dark. It's 4.30. It's raining. It's crazy. Um, the only other thing I did was add boxes over here for all the ore that we get. Uh, copper, tin, all that kind of stuff. And I moved the furnace out here to make it easy. So. But alright, I'm going to go ahead and get set sail. And hopefully by the time we get to this island, um, it'll be a little bit brighter out. All right, we are almost there. Man, it's, I wish it would clear up a little bit. We're stuck on something. Oh, there, there it goes. Yeah, it looks like there's some rocks here. Try to get this to turn around these. Maybe not. Are we that close to the to the shore? Oh, I guess so. Well, I think that's just where it's glitching out a little bit. Come on, let's push this over here. Okay. So I'm going to kind of hang out and wait for it to at least get brighter. What is this? Bottled notes. Okay. Yeah, we'll go ahead and read that. Interesting. I wonder why that showed up. They must have added that. I know they updated it yesterday or the day before. Um, so I'm not really sure. That's kind of strange. But anyway, let's go ahead and just uh, take a look at that while it's storming. Okay, bottled notes. I found this note. Blakewood Chronicles. Day one, we set sail from the port of London with high hopes and dreams of discovering the fabled lands rumored to lie across the vast Pacific. Our fleet of three merchant ships laden with precious goods and driven by the spirit of adventure did push forth into the unknown. As the captain of the land ship, I, Captain Edward Blackwood, did bear the weight of this mission upon mine shoulders. Day 15. The sea hath been kind to us thus far. We have encountered favorable winds and calm waters. Our crew is one of one is one hundred men, including seasoned sailors and merchants, are in good spirits. They speak of the riches that await us in the undiscovered lands, tales passed down through generations, and the honor of being the first to establish trade with these mythical regions. Day thirty. The mood aboard the ship hath shifted. We have entered uncharted waters, and the sea hath become unpredictable. Storms do batter ships, and whispers of discontent spread among the men. Some question the existence of the fabled lands, claiming they are but myths. Tensions rise as supplies begin to dwindle. Day 49. The first signs of mutiny did appear today. A small group of sailors led by a man named Henry openly challenged mine authority. They accused me of leading them to their deaths and demanding demanded we turn back. I ordered Henry to be confined to the brig, hoping to quell the unrest, but the seeds of rebellion already been sown. Day 59. The situation hath worsened. Henry's followers have grown in number, and their whispers of mutiny have turned into open defiance. I had no choice but to make an example of Henry. He was brought on deck, his hands bound and sentenced to hang in a cage suspended from the mast. His cries of betrayal echoed through the night, a grim reminder of the price of treason. Day 77. Henry's execution hath had a something effect on the crew. The rebellion hath been stifled for now, but the air is thick with fears and distrust. We continue our journey, but the spirit of adventure that once filled our hearts hath been replaced by a growing sense of dread. The sea, once our ally, now feels like a vast, inescapable prison. scared the hell out of me okay it's a little brighter out now I had to build a bed and yeah just wait for like 10 minutes to be able to sleep but now we can actually search this island because we can it, it. we can actually see what we're doing cool so let's go I'm gonna go around the outside first see if there's anything on the beach and then we'll work our way inland so one of those guys. I don't like those things. They're disgusting. So I'm going to keep an eye on the rock ledges for sticky notes because over on 
that island there is where I saw two sticky notes that we hadn't gotten. So we're going to search that whole island again. Um, and we're going to pick up those. Ooh, blueprint. Um, oh, look at this. There's an SOS thing here. That's too fun. Oh, there's, we can actually pick up the logs. That's really cool. Okay. Ooh, what's this? Bug repellent. Nothing in the med kit. No. Interesting. Let's see what this blueprint is real quick. Pro what? I don't know what that means. Protetsamine? Protetsamine spray? A national pesticide used to deal with land pests like snails or beetles. Oh. Well, why would we need those? The snails and the beetles don't bother us. Unless eventually they will. So. Oh, there's a flag up there. Cool. One of the American flags. Looks like it. Ooh, there's one of the advanced trap craps. Trap trap craps. <laughs> Crap traps. I'm so tired. I'm sorry. Um yeah. Okay. You know, let's uh let's just search this this side first. We'll go up there and stuff. And then we'll work our way around and, you know, search all this up here. So But it's kinda cool. So this one there's actually somebody on. Left the SOS. Uh maybe it was the captain. Can we get up there? How do we even get up there? We just have to like climb up? Like, here we go. Come on, there we go. Cool. So let's take a look around, see if we can find anything good. Oh, there's a tent up here. Let's go ahead and turn this on. Just for absolutely no reason at all. So there's the SOS. Oh, there's a body here. What's this? Oh, I don't want to start the fire. I didn't mean to do that. That's fine, though. Um, gold knife. Yeah, we'll take that. Oh, it killed. Oh, maybe not. We should. We, nah, we don't need that. Um, The Black Widow Spider he killed. Antibiotics? Bandage. Brewing cup. Bandage, energy bar, aloe leaf, gold arrows. Ooh, let's um, let's drop some of our regular arrows. So it looks like there's three of those. One, two, three. Oh, maybe I can't. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. We don't. We we can make those. Oh, I didn't even realize this was like a couple. Oh, that's so sad. Wonder who that was then. Oh wait. rare ring. I'm going to actually place this back down here next to them. So if we ever wanted to come and grab it, but here's a bed up here too. So it looks like they survived up here for a little bit. They were trying, but maybe they just gave up. Oh gosh. Nope. Satan spider, Satan spider. Did I get it? Yeah, I did. Okay. Stupid black widow. Okay. Uh, Ba, 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 ba. Rare ring, once worn by a Victorian social light, whispered to hold the secret of unrequited love within its slender band. Okay. So maybe a. It's like super old. I wonder if eventually we're going to have to like collect all those and take them to a certain spot. Okay. Doesn't look like there's anything else up here. That's really cool though. Like, I mean, it's not cool that those people died, but. Uh, it's cool to see all the notes of the people that we've... I think I see a blueprint right there. Um, all the notes that we've seen um, aren't just there just for, you know, the game. They're actually There's actually bodies around and stuff. So let's see what this is. Advanced bird cage. Bird cage. You can make a bird cage. Easy way to catch birds with higher probability than a normal bird snare. We've already got the elite bird snare. So many ways to catch birds. Oh! Run away! 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 Run! 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 Yeah, big kitty, you know likey. You don't likey, huh? Come here. Missed it. Shh. 
jerk. Okay, let's heal up. We should probably drink some water as well. Wait, where's my... I lost my... I lost my, I lost my water skin. Uh-oh. All right, come here, kitty kitty. Yeah, get wrecked. Senor kitty. Okay. I'm going to leave that there. And we'll get it on the way back. And take the meat back and smoke it and stuff. I guess we could cook it up there, but eh, it'll be alright. We've got a little bit on this right now anyway. Okay. Let's get our spear back out for them damn spurters. Them heckin' spooters. Oh. Another bottled note here. Okay. Um, let's see if we can get to a safe spot before I read that, because I don't want to get attacked while we are in our journal. I want to see if I can get up here, but I don't know if I can. This one doesn't look very climbable. Uh, there we go. I made it up. See if there's anything up here. It's not really looking like it. Okay. All right, let's take a look at this bottled note here. Okay, William's letter. I am William Hargrove, a sailor aboard the merchant vessel Neptune's Bounty. A sudden violent storm drove us off course and onto the treacherous rocks of this deserted island. The ship is wrecked beyond repair, and many of my comrades were lost to the sea. Those of us who survived are now marooned with dwindling supplies and no means of communication. We've tried signaling for help, but our efforts have been in vain. It's as if the world has forgotten us. Food is scarce and fresh water is becoming harder to find. The island feels cursed. Strange sounds echo through the night, and our fires often go out without explanation. I've seen remnants of previous castaways, old campsites, tattered clothing, and bones bleached by the sun. It's clear we're not the first to suffer this fate. If you find this letter, please alert the authorities and send rescue. Our hope fades with each passing day, but perhaps this message can bring us salvation. So, that was... Oh, wrong thing. Um, Neptune's Bounty? Um... Liquid Chronicles. Okay, so I thought maybe it was part of this, but I don't th think that's the same ship. So this is a different ship. Okay. Man, this whole set of islands is just awful to anybody that comes around it. All right, let's see if there's anything up on top of this one here. We're on the other side of the island now. There hasn't been anything else that I've seen. Hmm. What is this? Coral berry. Yeah, might as well try some of that. You. Yeah. Uh. Okay. Well, we got one. I think. Oh, there we go. All right. Bright red shiny berries can be eaten or planted. Well, let's plant some of them. We'll take them back and plant them before they go bad. Hopefully. Okay. Yeah. Looks like that's everything up here. Let's explore the rest of the beach. And then I think it might be all for this island. There's really not a whole lot other than... Okay, so there's a campsite right there. Uh, doesn't look like there's anything over here. Yeah, because we came right to about there and then went inland. Okay. Uh, so, there's another little campsite. Ooh. Tea? I'll take those coconuts, definitely. Don't really need the tea right now. What's this? Beer? Nice. Water bottle? Soda pop? Uh, brewing cup. Don't really need that. Oh, there we go. Sit out. Look at the other island. Okay, how do we get up? There we go. Is there anything here? Nope, just a bunch of the stuff that was left behind. Rotten crab body. This must have been the couple's other spot, right? I would assume so, because there's two chairs. They built a little storage thing. You know, they probably hung out here, and then if the tide got too too high, they probably went over to the other spot. Yeah, it looks like everything on the island. So we found a, blue, a couple of blueprints. We found some bottled notes. Uh, we're going to go to that island next. Uh, what was I going to do? I was going to do something. Oh, we were going to get this, uh, the jaguar meat, or leopard meat, or whatever it is. Leopard, yeah. Bro. <laughs> <That's> so trippy. <laughs> What's going on with your neck, man? I know I killed you, but not that hard. 
Okay, so like I said, I came over here. You can see where I farmed all of this. You can see all the tree stumps up there where I was just farming uh, for wood sticks and stuff just to have a lot of stuff over at base for us. And uh, you can see right there a big bright pink sticky note that we missed. But see, now they're, they're marked. They must have put that in the update. So let's take a look at this. Uh, which which is good because they're difficult to see. They're difficult to find. So, Logan Harper's note. Okay, so part two. So this was the first one. We already found this one. Date, September 7th, 1985. It's been six days since the crash. My head still throbs from the concussion and the short-term memory loss is maddening. I have to rely on the woman I've overheard. Her name is Claire and the kids more than I'd like. They seem to think I'm their leader, but I can barely keep myself together. The stench of the wreckage hasn't faded. Every time I catch a whiff brings me back to those first moments, to the bodies and the blood. I'm trying to piece together what happened, but everything's still a blur. The kids cry less now, but their eyes are filled with a silent plea. I'm not equipped to answer. Claire is doing her best to keep the kids calm. She comforts them, whispers reassurances, is admirable, but it feels pointless. We're strangers thrown together by fate, with no idea how to survive this place. I miss my family, but thinking about them feels like a luxury I can't afford right now. I've noticed Claire watching me. She wants to talk, to make plans, but I avoid it. I can't afford to get attached. I notice cuts and bruises on the children and can't help but wonder if they will really make it here. I've, if not, I'd rather avoid further heartache. I've managed to build a fire for us and some palm beddings on the floor. It's not much, but it's something. We found some food amongst the wreckage so far and have been sustaining ourselves. Though I worry about the rations, Claire keeps saying they'll find us in no time, but I have my doubts. Still, her optimism is a small comfort in this madness. So this is from one of the guys from the plane crash. Um, also, it's said in, it's saying that this is 100%, but like, yeah, we got all that done. We don't have the code. Yeah, we've only got three and zero for the radio tower. Interesting. I thought these might be for the radio tower, but apparently not. But yeah, there was another one right around here where I kept throwing stuff off of here. Okay. Oop. Okay. I'm going to look. have a look around the island as well again and see if we can find more. But okay, Logan Harper's notes. Um, okay, so this one's five pages, so I'm going to have a look around before we read that one so we're not just reading the whole time because we know you guys like that. Look at that. There's another one right there. Jeez. Okay, we'll just we'll just look around, see if we can collect all these. Because they're... Holy crap, there seems to be a lot of them. That's only 30%, and that's four of them that we found. Are they just going to all be... Oh, there's a bottled note here. Okay, well, we got that too. Maybe this will just be a reading episode. I mean, that's fine, I guess. How did I not see that one before? I must have just overlooked it. So, all right. I'm going to look around for some more stuff and I'll bring you guys back so you know where everything is located. Um, if we find more. I assume that all of his notes will be on this island considering they crashed here. Oh, looks like there's another one right over here. Oh, there's something. Yep, another sticky note. Okay. Another one of Logan Harper. So this is just pretty much right across from the radio island. Right in this little... Right under this little thingy here. All right. Let's continue on. So it's kind of strange. Like, I don't think that we found a body in this area. None of the bodies. Um, for a plane crash with all the death and destruction that he said, I would assume there would be bodies, but I don't think we found one on this island yet. Okay, it looks like there's another one right over here. They get in range right around like 16 meters, it looks like. So there's another one of those. And this one is right in this area here. Okay, so we've made it all the way around the island and I haven't seen another one there. We're going to go up and search like inland here in a bit. Um, but I want to go ahead and just read another one of these real quick. So we've got quite a few now. September 15th, 1985. It's been over a week since the crash, and reality is starting to set in. The initial hope that we'd be rescued quickly is fading. The food we scavenge from the wreckage is running low. I've started rationing what little we have left, but it's not going to last much longer. Claire, a 26-year-old medical student, has been doing her best to keep everyone patched up with the first aid supplies we found. 
She was on her way back home to Chicago. The kids, Tommy, age nine, Jake, age seven, and Emma, age some five, were on a trip to visit their grandma. Their parents didn't survive the crash. Today I spent most of my time searching the wreckage again, hoping to find something we missed. I managed to salvage a few more cans of food and a couple of bottles of water. It's not enough, but it's something. I also found another first aid kit, which we desperately needed. My head is still pounding, but at least we have some basic supplies now. Claire and I finally had a serious conversation about our situation. She wants to organize a search party to look for more survivors and supplies. I'm reluctant to leave the crash site, but she's right. We can't stay here forever. The plane is still too dangerous to go near, with smoke and occasional small fires flaring up. Staying close to it isn't an option, but venturing into the unknown is just as terrifying. The kids have started crying again, their initial shock giving way to fear and hunger. Every little sound sets them off at night, making it hard for any of us to sleep. They no longer believe Claire when she tells them we'll be rescued soon. It's heartbreaking to see the hope drain from their eyes. I've begun to think about how we'll need to adapt to survive here long term. The idea of building a more permanent shelter and finding sustainable food sources is becoming more urgent. I've decided to keep a journal to record my memories in case I start to forget more. Good thing I packed one. Every night the sounds of the island grow louder, the wind through the trees, the rustling leaves, and the distant calls of unknown animals. Unnerving, I lie awake, staring at the stars, wondering if anyone is looking for us. I try to remember more about the flight, but it's all fragments. My wife's face is the only clear memory, and it feels like a lifetime ago. I don't know how much longer we can hold out like this. We need a plan, and we need it soon. Tomorrow we'll start exploring beyond the wreckage. I hope we find something, anything that can help us survive a little longer. Okay, okay, so that one's six pages. We'll get to that one in a bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and take a look around this island just to see if I can find more. Um, and I'll let you guys know, obviously, as usual, if I find anything and where I find it. Oh, that is right. We did find this one body up here. That's the only one that we had found. But I haven't found anything yet. I, 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 we, we scoured the top of this, but I'm hoping that... Possibly. You back off, you stupid scorpion. Um, I'm hoping that there was other notes left around here that we didn't see before. And with the new like little system in place where it alerts you whenever you're close, will help us find them. If not... Oh! Oh, jeez. I did not mean to jump over that. Oh. Ho, 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 ho. Let's get a bandage on that. There we go, there we go, there we go, there we go. There's another one. It's all the way up there. Okay, cool. So that one, I don't really know exactly where on the island we are right now, but look for a uh, outcropping that looks like this to find it. Of course, now that they're, you know, easier to find, you know, yeah, you probably don't really need me to show you where they're at because you can find them on your own. But that's okay. I'm doing my best here. I'm doing my best. Oh, found another one. Found another one. Cool. So, let's see. We're at 60, 61%. That's it. Oh, boy. See if we can find them all. Let's do it. Speed run finding notes. Hold on a second. Why is there a blueprint in the plane? We've already been in there. Excuse me? Bone meal sack. Natural fertilizer and made of bones and manure. Interesting. That's strange. So they're adding stuff in the updates to places that you've already been. That's great. Oh, there's another note right here. Boink. So what are we at now? Oh, 69%. Nice. Part 4, The Choice. September 30th, 1985. Today we found an emergency raft washed up on the shore, along with the body of another survivor. The raft is a lifeline, a chance to escape this island and search for more re resources or even rescue. But it's also a risk. Claire and I stood over the body, the reality of our situation sinking in even deeper. We can use this to get to the nearby island, I said, my voice grim. We're running out of resources here. We need to move. Claire shook her head, 
worry etched on her face. Logan, is too, Logan, it's too dangerous. We've seen sharks in these waters. What if something happens? What if the raft doesn't hold? I felt frustration boiling over. We don't have a choice, Claire. We can't stay here and slowly starve. I'm going. You can stay here with the kids if you want, but I'm making the raft. The argument escalated quickly. Claire, usually so calm, yelled back, her voice crackling. You can't just abandon us. What if something happens to you? What then? We need you here, Logan. The kids need you. I was caught off guard by the intensity of her emotions, and my own frustration fueled my response. And what if staying here kills us all? We can't keep pretending everything will be okay if we just sit tight. We need to take risks. She broke down, tears streaming down her face. I can't do this alone, Logan. You're so distant, always keeping to yourself. You never spend any time with us, never play with the kids. It's dragging me down. I'm trying so hard, but I can't do it without you. Her words hit me like a punch to the gut. I hadn't realized how much my detachment was affecting her, affecting all of them. I felt my own emotions rising, a mix of guilt and something else, something I hadn't allowed myself to acknowledge. I'm sorry, I said, my voice softer. I'm so sorry, Claire. I, I didn't realize. I stayed with her that night. We sat by the fire, and for the first time, she shared her hopes and dreams. She talked about her life before the crash, her plans to become a doctor, her love for her family. She told me how she could see I was dis distant, how I never spent time with them than I had to, and how it was dragging her down, trying to be the only one to emotionally support the entire team. As she spoke, I realized how much I had come to care for her. My heart broke at the thought of losing her, of failing her and the kids. I reached out, pulling her into an embrace. We held each other, seeking warmth and comfort in the cold night. For the first time, I felt myself let myself feel something other than survival instincts. I let myself care. That night, as we cuddled together for warmth, I felt a shift. Claire's words had opened my eyes. I knew we couldn't stay here forever, but rushing into danger wasn't the answer either. We needed a plan, a way to ensure our safety while searching for a better place. Tomorrow, we'll reassess. We'll find a way to make this work together because in this nightmare, they're the only thing keeping me grounded and I can't lose them. And that scared me the most. Okay, so the next one is seven pages. But again, we will wait a bit. I know it's, it's like probably eight seconds in between these for you guys, but... Oh, here we go. Here we go. There's another one. What is this? A hat. It was a hat, though. Tommy's hat. Oh, no! <laughs> Oh no, not Tommy. Okay, well, I mean, oh, run away from the spider. Found another one down here. What a strange place. So they're starting to appear in like different places. A photograph, Jake's photograph. Must be of his wife. Okay. Interesting. So where are we at now? 84%. I'm going to try to find all these, but we're not going to read them all this episode. Well, we might. I might just end it with just a reading session. We shall see. Because I am quite lit tired. I don't know if you can see behind me. I'll zoom in a little bit for you there. But I've, I got myself a pooper, and she's sleeping right now. She's doing the big heckin' sleep. So I'm wondering if... Because I keep running past the same spots and new things kind of show up. So I'm wondering if things don't show up until you found the previous one, especially now that we're actually finding items and not just notes. So we found the hat, we found the photograph. So I'm wondering if you actually have to find them, the previous one first, which another thing, how the heck would anybody find this stuff if it weren't for these little indications? Like there's no way. The notes is one thing, because they're bright, brightly colored, and if you're actually super observant, unlike me, you could probably find them, but the hat was like underneath brush. The photograph was just laying on the ground. Like, there's just no way you're going to find those. So I have scoured this whole island multiple times. That's the, that's the, 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 the photograph is the last thing that I found. I can't find anything else. So, I'm going to read another one here real quick. 
And I'm wondering if, I mean, it's possible that they had gone to another island and there may be notes there on other islands, but I'm not 100% sure. So this one's seven pages here. Part five, growing. October 1st, 1985. So how long has it been since the crash? A full month. Okay. Last night changed everything. Claire and I spent the night talking, really talking, for the first time since the crash. We shared fears, hopes, and dreams, holding her close. I realized how much I care for her and the kids. They're my anchor in this chaotic sea of survival. But along with that realization came a flood of guilt. This morning, as we prepared for the day, I couldn't shake the feeling that I was betraying my wife. Claire and I shared a kiss last night, a moment of weakness that felt so right, yet so wrong. <laughs> My heart ached with the weight of my emotions, torn between the connection I was forming with Claire and my loyalty to my wife back home. I decided to talk to Claire about it. As we sipped on the last of our salvaged coffee, I took a deep breath. Claire, I need to explain something. Last night, it meant a lot to me, but it also made me realize why I've been so distant. She looked at me, concerned and understanding in her eyes. What is it, Logan? I lost my son when he was five. I began, my voice heavily, heavy with emotion. It destroyed me. It nearly destroyed my marriage, my wife and I. We almost didn't recover from it, but we did eventually. We became closer than ever. But the fear of losing another child, of feeling that pain again, it's been too much. That's why I've been keeping my distance from you and the kids. Claire's eyes filled with tears as she listened. Logan, I'm so sorry. I had no idea. I know, I said, feeling the sting of my own words. That's why I think it's wrong for us to get close. I care about you, Claire, more than I should. But I have a family back home, a wife who's waiting for me. I can't betray her. Her heart broke in front of me. I could see the pain in her eyes, the tears she fought to hold back. I understand, she whispered, her voice crackling. But it doesn't make, any, make it any easier. We spent the rest of the day preparing for our journey to the nearby island. I fortified the raft, making sure it was as seaworthy as possible. Claire took stock of our remaining supplies intended to the kids, Emma, Jake, and Tommy. Seemed more at ease seeing us working together, but there was a palpable tension in the air. As the sun began to set, we gathered around the fire. Claire and I explained our plan to the kids. We're going to explore a nearby island, I told them. It might be dangerous, but we'll be careful. We need to find more food and water, and maybe we'll find a better place to stay. The kids listened quietly. Emma, the oldest, looked at me with a seriousness that bullied her years. Will we come back, she asked. Yes, Claire assured her. We're just going to explore. We'll be back before you know it. That night, as we lay in our makeshift shelter, Claire reached out and took my hand. Thank you, she whispered, for staying, for understanding. I squeezed her hand gently, my heart heavy with the weight of my decision. We're in this together. We'll find a way to make it. As I drifted off to sleep, I thought about the journey ahead, the unknown waters, the potential dangers, but for the first time since the crash, I felt a glimmer of hope. We had a plan and we had each other. Tomorrow we'll set out. We'll scout the nearby island and come back with what we need. It's a risk, but it's a calculated one. And with Claire by my side, I know we can face whatever comes our way. But deep down, I know I had to prioritize getting back to my family. My wife needed me and I had to find a way to return to her no matter the cost. It was a harsh reality, but one I couldn't ignore. Okay, so I think we're gonna go ahead and head back home to the island, and that might be where I call this episode uh, once we get back and drop everything off. Um, I know it's probably gonna be a shorter episode than, than usual. I don't want to just be reading, and I don't really want to search another full island yet. Um, I want to kind of keep one island per episode. Plus, we got to do some scouting and things like that and try to figure out where we want to go next. Maybe sometime whenever I've got a chance off camera. I will uh, search back around that island again. It's just taken so long to search, and I'm not, not able to find anything else. Okay, we're back. We're back. So, yeah, I put all these log holders here. Uh, so whenever we actually go out, because we're running low on logs here, I want to be able to bring stuff back. Um, so I made these log holders here. So whenever I decide that I want to build a dock, we can do that. I also built a small stick holder, a couple large stick holders here, getting some metal sheets. Um, and then, yeah, like I said earlier, over here, we've got these uh, bins here for just all of the uh, ore that we collect. Let's go ahead and drop everything off. Uh, let's put you here. I don't really know what you're for, but that's fine. 
Uh, Timmy's or Tommy's hat. Wait, can we put this on Wilson? Put Tommy's hat on Wilson. Eh. No. Before we before I jump off, actually, um, considering all of the notes for like the plane crash or seem to be over there, and the radio towers here, I'm gonna take a search around this island and see if we missed anything here, because. I'm hoping that all of the notes might be just around here for this, so we can unlock the damn box. Uh, even though it says it's 100%, I don't know what the damn uh, code is because we've only got two numbers. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Seriously? Oh, cassette tape? James, it's Seamus. I hope you're hanging in there. I've discovered something. This island, it's not just home to ancient ruins. There are relics here, yes, but also pirate treasure, the kind of stuff you only read about. Mordenpole sent me here because they knew the legends were true. And I'll admit, that's what pulled me in too. These treasures, they could change everything. They're valuable, but they're also dangerous. There's power in them, something that shouldn't be tampered with. But I can't help thinking, if I could bring just a few of these back, Maybe we could finally dig ourselves out of this hole. No more debts, no more struggling. I'm running out of time, James, but I had to leave you this. Happy birthday, kid. I'm sorry I'm not there. I've always been proud of you, and I need you to be smart. If you're hearing this, it means you're already in deep. Be careful, and don't let this place take you down like it's trying to do to me. All right. We will try not to let it take us down. James, it's Seamus. If you're hearing this, then somehow you've made it here. I don't know if it's fate or just pure madness on my part, but I had this feeling, this certainty, that you'd end up on this cursed island. Maybe I've lost my mind. Honestly, I'm not sure anymore. I haven't showered in what feels like years, and I can't even remember what it's like to be off this rock. The only thing keeping me grounded is the thought that you might need my help. Traveling out of this region by boat? Forget it. The currents, the storms. Something's keeping us trapped here. But I've been working on something. Something that might actually get you out. A plane. I know it sounds crazy, but I've left instructions. Scattered them all over the island. Blueprints, parts lists, notes, bits and pieces of my sanity, really. I figured it's better to spread them out in case Mordenpole gets their hands on them. Or maybe I'm just trying to keep myself from completely losing it. Look, I don't know where you'll land or what condition you'll be in when you find this. But if you don't already have a way out, use the manual I've left behind. It's not perfect, but it's all I've got. I've spent God knows how long piecing it together. And while I can't guarantee it'll work, it's your best shot. And hey, if you find any of the other blueprints lying around, just know I was probably half mad when I drew them up. But they might just help you out of this hellhole. James, I'm sorry for everything. I'm sorry I wasn't there when you needed me most. But if you've made it this far, you've got a fighting chance. Keep your head straight, follow the plans, and get the hell out of here. And remember, no matter what, I've always been proud of you. Aw, oh, thanks, Seamus. So we found Wilson again. Another one. So he's the one who left the blueprints around everywhere. Unfortunately, that didn't really help us in the grand scheme of figuring out anything as far as the notes go. Yeah, like we still need four, we still need four digits. We've only got two of them. We got two digits. I'm not seeing anything else. And there's like, those obviously didn't help like the, uh, the escape, but obviously we've already found uh, blueprints for part of it. So we already kind of knew that we could do a plane. I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to keep, I'm going to search around a little bit more and see if there's anything else that pops up on our HUD to help us find these notes because I don't know where else to look other than this island. It just makes sense that they would all be here. Unless they're, I mean, they, they might be other places, but I just don't see why they would. Okay, so there's something here. Another tape? James, it's Seamus. If you're hearing this, then I guess I was right. You made it this far. But I've got to tell you, kid, I'm at the end of my rope. There's so much more I want to say, so much I want to warn you about. 
but if I do, I fear I'll burden you more than necessary. I don't want that for you. You've got enough on your plate already. I've left those blueprints scattered around the island. How to build a plane, your ticket out of this hellhole. Use them. Get out of here. Traveling by boat is useless. Something in these waters won't let you leave that way. But before you go, James, I have one last selfish request. I know it's asking a lot, but if you can, grab at least six of the treasures hidden on this island before you escape. They're more than just old relics. They might be the only way to make sure Mordenpole doesn't get their hands on them. And maybe, just maybe, they can help you and your mother start fresh. But that's it, James. Don't chase the mysteries of this place. They're not worth it. Mordenpole, this island, the secrets it holds, it's all a trap. I got caught up in it, and now I'm paying the price. But you, you still have a chance. Take those treasures, get back to your mother. It's bad enough I left her. Don't let her lose her only son, too. I'm sorry, James. I'm sorry for everything. But I need you to survive. That's what matters now. And if you do, forget about Morton Pole. Forget about this cursed place and live your best life. That's all I want for you. Be smart and get the hell out of here. Okay, so he wants us to grab six of the treasures and take them back with us. Well, unfortunately, one of them is, uh, you know, fell through the map, so there's uh, so we can't take that one back with us. Um, but honestly, that looks like everything on the island, to be completely honest. Um, I haven't seen another... Oh, oh, just kidding, just kidding, there's another one. Plane repair manual. Ho, 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 ho. Oh, look at that. Yeah, see, look at this. We're going to need all this stuff from the uh, 15 circuit board. Holy crap, bowls. That's so much stuff. I mean, we'll get there eventually. We'll get there eventually. Uh, but yeah, I was going to say that was that looked, looked to be everything on the island so far. But honestly, like that doesn't seem to be enough to, I mean, is that it for the plane? He said he started working on the plane. So I'm wondering if it's on an island that we haven't been to yet and we just have to go there and finish it. So it's a possibility. I think that's where we're going to call this episode. I thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope that you are enjoying this series because I am very much enjoying this game. Next episode, we'll figure out what we're going to do in the next episode. Probably there's another island clear out there. There's something clear out there anyway. I want to go see what that little tiny thing is out there, but we're going to go out there. We're going to take a look at that. Uh, on the next episode. But again, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, and we will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.